Hello, all you bougie nerds and citizens of Alabama. My name is Michael B, and you're watching Michael's Brown Chair Special. So surprise, surprise, um, I am back after three months. Um, I'm currently here because I am working off of more than two to three hours of sleep. I'm just, I'm just surprised I made it to the end of the year to be quite honest. Speaking of 2020 as a whole, this video should be coming to you on New Year's. So welcome to 2021, yay. Also, I have to say um, that this idea comes from my sister Ryan. Um, she would cut me if I did not mention this, but now it's time that we get to the real material, which is where I look back on all the things that I watched in 2020 and give my unadulterated, unscripted uh, review in pretty much 15 seconds or less. Let's get into it. This movie is so grand and it feels like such a spectacle. You are right there the entire time. And as an editing nerd, I think it's so cool how the entire movie looks like it was done in one shot. 1917 easily, easily. And I don't like to give out tens a lot. So I'm gonna say a good 9.9. .9. Now I've seen Parasite uh, maybe three times, three or four times. I watched it with my residents, um, <laughs> forgot there was like a hefty little sex scene in there. Parasite, a solid nine out of 10. Um, I watched this movie for a class um, that I was in TV producing. Love my professor, super sweet. This was a movie I did not care about though. <laughs> it's so old and it's it did. I feel like it did not age well, even though it has two Hollywood icons in it. I was just bored to tears. I don't know, I'm gonna give this a good five out of 10 though. <laughs> There's probably so many video essays that cover why Get Out is as thrilling as it is, but um, I will not be that video essay because I have probably 50 other titles to cover. So, wow! eight out of 10. I'm not gonna lie, I thought this was the most boring of the Oscar nominees and people love it. I know I'm in the minority for this and I don't really understand why. I don't know why I didn't click with it. I watched it three times. Um, it's just so boring to me. It was a movie. And six out of ten. Irishman was my second least favorite of the Oscar nominees this year mainly because it was so long. It's so long. Oh my god. I've watched movies that are long um but have not felt long. This movie felt like it was five hours and it was three and a half. The CGI was amazing making them look young. That is talent beyond my imagination and I appreciate it. I appreciate the existence of this film. Did I enjoy watching it? No. Good five out of ten. And there's so many adaptations of Little Women. I thought that this one was really refreshing. It brought some new things to the play. It added some clarity to some characters. Gave us some good overall character development. There's some really fun video essays that outline the problems with costuming in this movie and how um, most of it is historically quite inaccurate, but I thought that Greta Gerwig did an amazing job with this movie. It's so colorful and so creative, and I think it gives Joe the real arc that she needed, um, especially in 2020. I say a good seven out of 10. I love watching Kenny JD and her bad movies and a beat series that she does, and she always says bad movies always have a great soundtrack, and I love this soundtrack. <laughs> the movie, however, um, it gave me very much like Captain Marvel vibes. It was it was good on the first watch. It was fun because I went and saw it with my friends. But will I be watching it again? And did I need to watch it to understand the DC universe? No. So I'm gonna give this a nice six out of ten. I don't know. It was pretty. It's it's not even my favorite Quentin Tarantino film. Um, I don't think there was too many um, in word bombs in this movie, and not too much blood from all oh, well. <laughs> Never mind, scratch that last one. So I'm gonna give this a good 7.5 out of 10. P.S. I love, what is this? P.S. I still love you. Is this a K-drama? This was my first K-drama of the year, it looks like. And oh my Lord, I love it. I've never been more interested in business than watching this movie. And I was a business major for like a week. I love me some good uh, Park Seo Joon. I think that he's a wonderful actor and this was a great move for him in showing us different characters that he could play. Definitely will give it a good, 7.8 out of 10, <laughs> that's really specific. I think we all, all saw this mess. I love messy, chaotic docu-series like this. I don't even know what to call this. Is this a documentary? I, a drama, a comedy, an action, who knows? But it is an eight out of 10 for me. So first anime of the year looks like, this is obviously an old series, but I wanted to go back and sort of finish the Moe classics of sorts. If, if this, is this even Moe? Any pretty 
cute well it's a cute girl doing cute things so so many shows are just like here's what you got and they're getting into some shenanigans without really telling us why or how we got here so i really love this show it's a classic for a reason and it definitely gets a nice little 6.8 from me um the story uh, could be better towards the end it kind of diverges from its historical roots um and sort of writes its own ending and um i don't know i'm kind of of the opinion if you're gonna write a show about historical characters then write their story <laughs> this series could have been so much better and i remember talking to my friend alexis about it and i was like dude you see this and she's like dude i see this but the anime wong spotlight was really refreshing so i'm gonna give this series a good 5.5 .5 out of 10 i don't know there were some parts i really liked some parts i didn't anyway i i feel like this was a rushed show i know people that thrive thrive off Castlevania and I don't care. I do not care about the show. I finished it and I still don't care. The irony is Vampire Night in middle school was like the only manga I, I, I basically ate it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I was trying to get back into my vampire roots and this just didn't, didn't, didn't do it for me. Yeah, I don't know, four out of 10. I love me a good documentary. When they spread out, all the possibilities and, and the, the greater um, uh, uh, presence that this singular story has in the grand scheme of science and psychology and politics. Oh boy. oh boy. I can't say anything about this doc because I feel like I'm going to inadvertently give something away and I want to keep this a fairly spoiler free video. Nine out of 10 for me. Great movie. This movie was supposed to be in my quarantine survival kit video, but I felt like it would be too long. So I cut it because I knew I'd be talking about it eventually. It's visually stunning the action sequences are great the acting is phenomenal I think the writing was really good and this director from what i researched he'd only done like maybe one movie and a short film before this and um oh boy 9.5 out of 10 easy um if you want to cry this is a great movie obviously um a good 7 out of 10 for me not my favorite studio ghibli movie of course um i'm a kiki delivery service supremacist um i saw that so many people on my feed were like oh my god the king oh my god he's back he's back it's amazing i did not like boys or flowers i hate that drama with a passion didn't like legend of the deep blue sea but i did like goblin so i was like all right fine let me sit down and finish this yeah i'm gonna say a good six out of ten these are the shows that make me feel like i was sheltered as a kid it's 6.5 out of 10. Oh, I forgot about this. I've watched me a gay K-drama. I did not think this was gonna be as good as it was. Because Korea ain't really with the homosexuals. 5.7 out of 10. This was a Chinese reality show. And I did a Chinese presentation over this for my professor. The audition process was messy. They cut people for things that they just praised another person for. Four out of ten for just how long it was. For all my K-pop fans out there, this is the show that spawned in hyphen. I just felt like why are they in this building all the time? We're in the middle of a forest. Let them go out and do other things. There were no other activities outside of that that let me explore their personalities. I was just like, dude, I don't care the result of this as long as they make good music. Ryan and I finished it, but um, it was still a solid five out of 10 for me. This was right around the time where I think the Black Lives Matter movement was reaching its peak. Ava DuVernay does it again with an amazing, amazing documentary, the prevalence of prison labor, um, incarceration, within POC communities and just how much uh, black exploitation we see within the criminal justice system. It is an eight out of 10. Regardless of my rating, this is just something you need to watch. People rave about like Stranger Things and the Goonies and whatever, but the child performances in this, I can imagine being their parents and it's like you have, you have to talk to your kids and explain what they're what they're portraying because that can be traumatic in of itself i'm just going to give this a great nine out of ten i saw this on a tiktok and it was basically like here are top five documentaries you need to watch that are like insane and i was like bet oh lord oh me oh my seven out of ten for the the doc in of itself oh negative one million out of ten for the topic i can't believe people can be this disgusting like being a surgeon already sounds stressful enough because you have lives on your hands bro being a matchmaker that you also have lives on your hands and jesus it was a really good show i wish it was just a little longer i don't know can i critique something when i want more of it Pfft. a good seven out of ten it was god awful three out of ten I am not a hospital work 
daily life and a career. I don't care about the CSIs, all of the like Grey's Anatomy. I don't care about those types of shows. So this was interesting for me. It's long, but it pays off and it's really good. 7.5 out of 10. Obviously really sad, but it puts more of an emphasis and highlights surrounding the actual students that were at Columbine rather than the murderers. I think that it's really impactful to give these students the ability to take back the power and the narrative of their own story. So obviously I think a really good eight out of 10. I think that this season kind of was a bit wonky for me only because when did she want to be an idol? I thought her whole, our whole path was as a career woman and, and sort of voicing the frustrations of the working class in Japan. Not my favorite season, but it was nice to see Reds go again. So I don't know, good six out of 10. This show was amazing. All the hype that it's getting, I, I reiterate tenfold. I love the writing. It is so smart and intentional and it lays you like little Easter eggs that if you paid attention through the show you probably would have known but the twists are so great. It is on Netflix right now if you want to watch it. Season 2 is coming in 2021 and I cannot wait. Easily 8.5 out of 10. I was a big fan of Devil Man Cry Baby. Again love me a good thriller. I didn't really love the series though. I thought it kind of went off on, into some weird places. Um, I didn't think in some points, places that we ended up in in the plot had any motivation behind them. It would just be like, all right, we're here. 6.3 out of 10. Oh, y'all gonna hate me for this one, but I'm gonna give this a good four out of 10. I thought everyone was annoying. The girl, she was like mentally, what, eight, but they aged up her body so that she was a teenager. I, d I just didn't like the show and I thought I would. I remember I first started this when I was on my flight to Memphis, forgot about it, and then started it back again. Um, the art style is really cool, the writing is eclectic, and they have a freaking song by Freddie Mercury as the outro. What? I'm the great Dope. 6.8 out of 10. Oh, I love me some teen drama trash. Oh, it's so great. Every season has a different rating for me, but I think overall, with Gossip Girl being the classic it is, easily a solid 6.4 out of 10. See for yourself. It is incredibly heavy and manipulative, abusive, uh, a painful watch if you care for the safety of children. <laughs> I appreciate its existence, obviously, because it shed a light on a lot of issues within the church. Um, seven out of 10. Started this off of a recommendation from a friend. Love Shameless, everything about it. The writing is great, the pacing is great, the acting is great, the fact that we see them aged, aged as the show goes along, oh my God. They give us though a new Ian, is that the black kid's name? It's like a new new baby every episode. That's, I find that hilarious. Y'all may be mad, but I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. I really like this show. All American was a show that seemed to unload all of the show's issues onto the main character, um, whether that be bad writing, um, needing to progress the plot, or just <laughs> having fun messing with our main character for no reason. I don't know, but I'm gonna give this a good five out of 10. This movie is so bad. First of all, there's no money in this movie. I don't know if they just spent $2 and a pack of Pepsi on this movie. The humor is also such pee pee poo poo humor that it it's still not funny in the year that it came out. Maybe because it's Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa, but like, come on, three out of 10. And that's me being nice. Um, not like another teen movie definitely reminded me that Chris Evans had a career before Captain America. This movie had so much sideburn. <laughs> um, it was just really fun. I typically don't like parody movies because again, they fall under the pee pee poo poo humor spectrum. But um, this movie, I'll give a happy six out of 10. Every subject of this series is in jail. We know they murdered somebody. You can't defend murder. Um, and I think that it's been interesting to see people sort of come to terms with that, especially when some of these stories, the sources have gone through such traumatic and awful events that it's almost like they were pushed to this point. So this is an easy 6.5, seven on some episodes out of 10 for me. Um, love me some Jarrell Jerome. Y'all know Moonlight's a great movie. I don't know why I waited this long to watch it, but obviously nine out of 10. If there is a better medium to showcase to young people the manipulation, the egotistical, narcissistic, power hungry manner that politics is ingrained in, can't think of a better method than showing us a documentary about boys pretending to create their own government. 
in Texas, no less. I'm gonna give this an easy 8.5 out of 10. This is a movie that I saw all over Weeb TikTok. Number one, it is banned in Japan. The best two words I can think of to describe this movie is graphic and depraved. That being said, I loved it. I thought it was really great. Animation wise, there's so many techniques and things that they used in the 80s that just make this movie so interesting to watch visually. I didn't really find it scary. I was actually really enthralled with it, but um, yeah, I like this movie a lot. I would say eight out of 10. Terrible movie, watch it with some friends. Again, I'm not a horror movie person, but this did not scare me at all. The writing was cheesy, the set was ugly, and everything about this smelled cheap. I also didn't like how whenever African culture or I guess like um, New Orleans voodoo culture is used in media, it is like a, um, this exotic sort of tribal savage thing that is just like, oh my God, witches and magic. Three out of 10. <laughs> 90s movies bro just hit different i swear people would have just made different back then because i look at these movies i'm like everyone's beautiful uh, overall this is a good 7 out of 10. i did not know that this movie even existed i knew that they got together to do this play i knew that i would never be able to see it live and i knew that i could not find a pirate so <laughs> um until i was surfing through netflix one day and was like oh my god God has shed his light down upon me. The Boys in the Band was a wonderful, wonderful movie. I think it covers so many amazing things. It is like a time capsule. The cast is phenomenal. It was like the gay Marvel Avengers <laughs> of Broadway. It was so much fun. Easily an 8.5, dare I say nine out of 10. Even though it is not finished, I gotta talk about this K-drama because I was so excited for this K-drama to come out only to be disappointed. This, I read the webtoon, caught all the way up so that when the drama came out, I'd be already prepared. They follow none of it. It's like they have the skeleton of what the book is, but take away the spine, the hip bone, the femur, the most important parts, and then just keep the fingertips for some reason. Let's just make up characters that never existed. That's only more money and adds nothing. <sighs> I hope it gets better, I really do. 5.5, maybe a six as a, out of 10. I had just watched Inception with my mom and my sister the other day. Obviously a classic, Inception has been highlighted and revered for years. Christopher Nolan has made multitudes of fat checks off this movie because it's a great movie, super creative. Obviously 8.5 out of 10 for me. On the flip side, my mom, my sister and I had also watched Tenet after we finished this movie. And Tenet is everything that Inception is not in the most negative ways. The premise of the movie was quite interesting. However, I found it to be incredibly convoluted. And I also found the protagonist to be poorly cast. Basically, uh, Denzel's son did not do a good job. This movie had so many amazing cameos. That dude who is always the British guy in every film, Robert Pattinson, um, the guy who's Scarlet Witch's brother in Marvel's. I'm, like, I'm just like, these are so many familiar faces. This movie had so much money. Why was it so bad? It's not the first time we've seen a movie that has had a lot of money behind it and a lot of talent be terrible at <clears throat> Mulan, but um, disappointing nonetheless. So a solid four out of 10 for me. Wonderful, wonderful season. I can't remember who told me to start watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, but it is such a fun ride. Tasha took over for Claire and came with class, respect, and a plan. Claire had none of those things. I would rate this season a good seven out of 10. I basically just looked up some of the top Chinese dramas of all time. And this is, I think the second or third most popular. And when I started it, I was like, why? After I gave an episode or two, I love it. It's so cute and so dramatic and cheesy in the best ways. 6.5 out of 10. That is my last show for the, well, most you're watching Soul tonight, right? Yes. Okay, Soul will technically be my last show. This has obviously been a long year of a lot of really great shows, a lot of really bad shows, shows that I did not care about so little that I didn't even put on here. Overall, thank you so much for spending this year with me. Make sure that you take care of yourself. I hope you have enjoyed listening to what I've watched. Tell me if you've watched anything interesting and happy new year.